Hello and welcome to the latest Planet Computers Astro Slide Q&A, this one being part three. I'm really pleased to have been joined again today by Yanko Mersic Flogel and Davide Greedy from Planet Computers. And uh, I'm also excited to report that we've had so many questions from backers and friends of the company over the past few days, uh, which has been fantastic. And thank you very much for sending in all your information and all your questions. Broadly, we've grouped the questions into areas, including the Astro specification, the final spec, hardware questions on the likes of monitors, battery, display, hinge, camera, and, and other hardware questions. Then we have some software questions. These are around both Android and Linux. And then other general questions related to the future, some admin type things uh, before we finish in, uh, in some minutes time. So without further ado, uh, let's get started on this, the third Planet Computers Astro Slide Q&A. First question comes from Eric, and um, it's a very straightforward and simple one. I know at the last Q&A, you were talking about asking the, um, the backers of their views on the final, on the final battery size, etc. So the question is really simple from Eric. It's could you just please confirm the final technical specs in, in this call um, of Astro Slide? So the, the final spec is actually pu published on the, on the website of Indiegogo. So you can see it there under the campaign. Uh, the battery size we have now increased after the poll uh, to 4,000 million powers. So basically we've gone back to the 4,000 million powers the thickness is slightly thicker in the middle, but it's not actually uh, that much more. So uh, we appreciated that uh, feedback uh, on the on the spec uh, changes. So we really appreciate those, those comments, and it has actually changed the hardware specification a little bit. So I think it's a win-win for all. I think. And and was there a, a significant i'm assuming there was a significant majority of people that preferred the bigger battery rather than the, the slimmer casing yes i mean the bigger battery was i think it was overwhelming it was nearly i think something like 80 percent so uh it was really quite clear that uh, people wanted to have the uh the bigger battery and uh that's obviously um something that is important but i think uh the the processor itself is quite power efficient. So we would have seen uh, a reasonable performance with a slightly smaller battery, but I think uh, obviously more battery, it's there. So it's uh, it's all systems go. Great stuff. Okay, well, thank you very much for the, the clarity on that. Um, JH and several other people actually have asked questions still around. I know that last time you said you, you would look to have one final uh, try to get some uh, progress from MediaTek after the feedback from backers. Just wondered whether there was anything to add there, whether there's any thoughts. I know some people have sort of raised the idea that maybe they would wait longer or pay more for a device later. Um, but, you know, I'm, I, I'm just curious to hear if there's any progress whatsoever in that direction. So, yeah, so following the announcements of the Dimensity 1000, sorry, 1100 and 1200, uh, we've gone back to MediaTek uh, just before the Chinese New Year holiday. So um, we've had the only feedback we've had at the moment is that we will hear back uh, after the Chinese New Year holiday. So I suppose in early March uh, we hear something back, but you know we're we're we have to move forward. So we're moving forward with what we have now. Understood. Okay. Great, thanks for the update there, that's very helpful. Um, and we're gonna stick with hardware for a little while, I think. Um, and one question that's been asked by lots of people is with regards to connecting an external monitor to Astro Slide and also USB-C cables. So I'd like to give a shout out for, um, for Fran, uh, Huge Dubois, uh, Marco, Skynet, uh, Zar, Loopback7084, George, Jorge or George, Peter Thornbury, PT and Kuin Hiko, all of which were asking questions around external monitors and the USB-C. And the first one really is um, what kind of monitors can be supported by Astro Slide? So um, on the monitor side, so firstly, the as you know, we have 
dual USB-C connectors, right? So it will be a very similar configuration to the Cosmo in terms of the connectivity. So it will be, there will be an external adapter to HDMI um, and there will be a, 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 the same sort of thing, sort of dual, so that either the Cosmo can be, one side can be master or can be slave. Um, there can be a USB-C hub connected to it, but that hub can support things like ethernet and USB-A uh, ports. So for example, you could connect multiple USB sticks um, uh, or ethernet, but you know, it's either master or slave. So that's kind of typically how it works. Of course, the USB-C also provides connectivity to talking to the PC. So, um, so, what, so essentially one side could be used for uh, uh, connecting to the screen which is HDMI and it's a, a 1080p full HD resolution, right? So that's kind of uh, what we have. Okay. And in terms of that USB-C cable, I know in the past it's been a proprietary cable. Would that still be the case? Yes, because it's still the MediaTek standard. So it's the proprietary MediaTek cable, which we, um, which we produce. Great. Okay, thank you. And I know that will be available as an accessory and we will come on to speak about some of the accessories later on in, in the Q&A. So uh, we'll come back to that. Um, Sarah has a question which is very technical, so I'm going to read it out exactly as it is and hopefully it makes more sense to either you, Yanko, or Davide than um, my uh, adult uh, ancient brain. But uh, the question is, since this device uses USB-C and supports DisplayPort monitors over USB-C alt mode, it would be really nice if the reverse were also true. Have the phone present itself to a headless USB-C computer as a DisplayPort monitor? USB keyboard and touchscreen on top of the usual Android ability to become a USB network interface. Is there any possibility of including something like that? Uh, so we thought about this. Uh, so firstly, some corrections there. It's not actually alt mode. Uh, this is a, a proprietary uh, HDMI output from MediaTek. So there's a DP chip that then converts to HDMI and uh, there'll be our adapter uh, that we can use. But uh, on the other point, which is essentially, could we use the, it essentially says, could we use the Astro as a kind of KVM unit, display unit, right? So basically uh, the answer is no, we can't because it's not made that way. But we have thought about that uh, ever since the Gemini, that kind of idea that we could use this kind of small unit as, a, as an interface that we could plug in. A, a headless computer and basically uh, control it. So uh, no, it cannot be done at, at this point, uh, but it's something that we have been thinking about. It's completely, it's a completely different product. Okay, that's clear. Thank you very much. So you mentioned the battery in the larger size earlier. So thank you for confirming that. Um, we've got a few questions actually around some uh, philosophical questions around battery technology as a whole, which I'll perhaps come to in a moment, and some uh, more specific questions around the Astro slide battery. Um, Dennis Freshwater, has, thank you for your question, Dennis, uh, has said, now we've got a 4,000 milliamp battery confirmed. Can we update kind of expected call times, standby times, video playback times, etc. for the device. I suspect this is probably something that you'll want to publish rather than talk about now. But I guess the, the wider question is, are you confident that the average user spending a day with the device using it for um, productivity and entertainment would get through a day without needing to charge again? Um, so the, on the last point, yes, we're, com we're confident that this, this will be fine in terms of uh, day day of use. Um, we think it will be even more with the 4,000 milliamp hour battery. But in terms of um, the what you, what you were talking about, you know, the the overall performance, uh, those figures we do not have yet. As soon as we have them, we will publish them. But we do, we do not have them yet because uh, the overall the full radio stack and everything else needs to be functioning so that we can check it. We can check it with 5G because we have 5G uh, SIMs um, here in the office and we can, we can check it. So um, uh, certainly 
certainly uh, we will be publishing those figures. Super, thanks. And while we're on the subjects, I think this is probably quite a quick and easy one to resolve. Uh, Paul Rygrotsky asks about um, wireless charging, charging by Qi. Um, that is that is part of the specification, I believe. Yes, so um, yes, it is part of the specification. I'm not sure, maybe Paul missed it, but um, we, we have wireless charging in the unit. So we have both high-speed charging. So uh, something that MediaTek call Pump Express technology. So we have the Pump Express, which allows you to charge using the cable, using the USB-C cable uh, and, and the, the, the special Pump Express uh, chargers, which come with, uh, uh, with the, the Astro itself. Um, and we make those charges as well. So, uh, and of course you can also, ch we'll be able to charge wirelessly so uh, with the with the QI with the G um, G standard as well. So it's a ten watt um, wireless charging, uh, which is uh, first the first uh, device that we have that has wireless charging. Great stuff. So Paul, your uh, question is uh, comprehensively answered there. Uh, Chris Hudson and Ali both have questions about um, well, what Chris this is more of a philosophical one, which is why is it that removable batteries are no longer available in modern smartphones? Um, and Ali says the modified Astro battery will it have a removable back? Um, and then also Warren says, will you sell extra batteries if he needs to swap out batteries? Now, um, if you can first of all kind of just comment on whether the battery will be removable or not uh, to the average user without, if you like, going to a service center. Right, so it's it's uh, not user removable in a normal sense that it's a protected case. I think uh, we might've mentioned this before, but if you have a user removable battery, it needs to have a very hard shell, which means that the thickness increases even further. And that's a no-go area for us because the unit needs to stay reasonably thin. So, uh, and this is actually the reason why in most phones, um, the removable battery um, has been essentially replaced by what is now called a replaceable battery, not a removable battery, right? So the removable battery um, was thicker um, and that was that was the main, the main problem with today's very thin phones because things were getting very thin. Um, however, it is uh, replaceable, um, as we have done on the Cosmo and the Gemini, it is replaceable, not user replaceable, but by a trained technician. Uh, some users, we have seen some users try to do it and ask us for instructions and buy spare batteries uh, directly. So that leads me on to your last point, which is, uh, will there be um, battery, extra batteries that you can purchase? So. Um, we uh, we will we think it's a it's a reasonably good idea to do that, and uh, we will uh, we will see if we can do that uh, in case you just want to buy an additional battery or reserve an additional battery. We have to make the final decision, but there's certainly um, be a possibility to maybe buy a battery or reserve a battery if you wanted it replaced. Um, so that's something that we will um, uh, that's something that we will inform more on later um, in the process lovely stuff okay thanks very much for all those questions everybody on the battery uh front i'd like to come on to probably the most asked question in this round of uh, you know and there were upwards of 200 questions asked by the backers and that was around um the protection of the device either uh, around case or screen protection etc cetera, etc cetera. and i'd like to thank um Doma, Carlos, Rod H, Pippi Mid, uh, Sanislav Filipov, Hel Venstein, and Yellow Sea for all these questions. Loads and loads of people ask this question, which is basically, will you be providing a protective case for Astro Slide, number one? And number two, can you ship the device either with, uh, uh, you know, included in, in the box or at an additional cost or as an accessory or whatever? a screen protector that fits the um, the screen perfectly. Right, so uh, there are basically um, probably uh, three, three, three points here. Uh, one is about, um, so the screen protector, um, um, 
we'll be announcing a screen protector in due course. So that's uh, what we'll have. Um, typically the unit that comes out of the factory. So the, another thing was the toughness of the glass, which is kind of connected to yeah. this point. Um, uh, the toughness of it is Gorilla Glass, so it should be quite tough. Uh, we don't have the problem that we've had with the Gemini and the Cosmo where the screen was actually closing onto the uh, keyboard. So the screen is on the outside, so it, we don't have the problem that the type of coating that we had before would actually cause marks if it was the type of coating that Gorilla Glass would be, require would be causing marks. So we w basically went with a different type of technology in order to avoid those kind of marks of the keys causing a marking on the Gemini and the Cosmo, right? So on the Astro, we don't have that problem. We went for Gorilla Glass. It is Gorilla Glass. You will be able to get a additional screen protector. And then on the case side, uh, there will be a protective case and we'll be announcing both of those uh, accessories and due course probably sometime in April. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, that's all very clear. Um, a few questions around the camera as well, particularly hi to Eamon from um, Ireland. Several others asked this question as well. I'll ask questions around the camera. Um, and Eamon's question was, how good is the camera in, in, a, in a few words? Um, the, the, I think the question was that, that um, is the camera an integral uh, camera that I could use in, you know, that would be of similar standard and specification to uh, what I would see on a reasonably high level smartphone today, I guess is, is probably the fairest way of, of encapsulating Eamon and others' his question. Yeah, so, you know, the camera is, it's a Sony sensor, so it's really the top, top end sensor. Uh, it's a kind of tier one sensor, uh, 48 megapixel. So uh, we, we think that um, you'll, uh, you'll see a very high quality image. Uh, we have to see how the camera tunes still and so on, but we hope that we'll get some very good results. Expectation is is the, of high quality, yeah, great high stuff. quality, better than Gemini, much better than Gemini, a be little bit better, sorry, much better than Gemini, better than Cosmo, okay. uh, very comparable to, to, you know, a lot of the high-end phones have the same 48 megapixel uh, Sony sensor inside, uh, um, in the past, in the past oh, great. few years. Yeah. Okay. And um, Palwinda Jutley asks, uh, will their, uh, the video be capable of doing 4K at 60 frames per second? Is there any spec on that? So on that one, uh, is, it's, it's 4K. Uh, we expect 4K, yes, um, but not at 60 frames. So this is to do with video recording mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just saying video recording uh, 30 frames a second. On the, okay. 4K, on the 4k red lots of questions as well uh, around hardware on the hinge thank you very much to um zach 2890 miko jens carmen christian and many many others saying uh yanko would you please be able to show us um or show off the hinge mechanism again working so i wonder if you could if you could just do that for us quickly yeah, so I'm just going to show uh, a unit here. Okay, so this is uh, the CS sample. So, and then you can see here, I can twist the unit in and just slide it back. So um, it's it's reasonably simple. And then I can twist it open again. Let's see if I can do it easily and then open it out. Okay, so it's very, very easy to do. Um, I'll try that again and close it. So you can see it's, it's very easy to do. We're still improving it, but it's already pretty good. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, now, another question is around the durability of the hinge. Thanks and hi to Oliver, Michael Fuller, Eamon in Ireland again, Stefan, Dom Rodriguez and John. Thank you all for your questions about the durability, just in terms of um, life cycle testing, in terms of opening and closing that hinge multiple times. Is there anything you can you can tell us on that? Uh, I think, you know, there's a, there's a testing, um, there's a testing kit now that's testing the open and closed um, uh, mechanism. So there's a testing rig, which is opening and closing the device. And um, it's, it's testing uh, the, the mechanism for its durability. So we think that during the lifetime, it should be, it should be sufficient. So yeah, we're, okay. we're, we're, we're going into the uh, multiple tens of thousands here. 
Super. Thank you. Now, Wolfgang Solomon has a very specific question around this, and that was, will the slider mechanism allow one-handed opening of the device? Not sure whether that's anything you've tested yet or whether it might be uh, too early to test uh, it. A bit too early to test that, but I hope that we can. Um, I'm pretty sure that we probably can, but uh, worst case, you know, you'll need a, you need a two-handed slide like we have now. Next question is from Eska Rahn, and it's around the coupling between the two rails. Um, the question is based around the vi uh, in the video, you seem to have to be quite careful about how you uh, deliver an even push with uh, both hands. Um, is that the case or is it actually really quite robust? And I guess time will, will move on as well because it's the very first samples that you have at the moment, right? Uh it, it is uh, so to answer the question there is a coupling but we're not describing it in much detail because uh there was a patent that was filed last week and uh and and we've been patenting some of that technology um but essentially it will allow for a, a pretty even push you know i think if you're really trying to skew the unit on one side um you know it might be um it might be sort of less giving, but in general, I think uh, any kind of reasonable, it doesn't need to be fully centered or anything like that. So okay. you know, we still need to wait for the final tooling results, but with the, uh, with the uh, early, early samples, you know, it's, it's pretty good. We don't need to take care too much on the closing or opening. You know? And a follow-up question was around the balance point on the device. If the device is sat on a table uh, open, does it uh, sit solidly on the table or does it wobble? Do, you know, is it likely to tip over? Uh, no, it's not likely to tip over at all because if, okay. you, if you see, it's got the legs that come out. Mm. So you can see the legs there coming out of the unit which are holding it completely steady. So if it didn't have those legs protruding, right, obviously the, the, there'd there'd be a problem. Be a, there would be a problem, right? But in, in this case, there is, there is no problem at all. Great stuff. Thank you. So there's just some very specific final specification stroke hardware issues. I think we can run through most of these with almost a yes or a no, to be honest. Um, and some of them we I think we may have covered off in the past, but it's useful to get to hear some progress as well. So the first one, thanks to Millet for this question, which is, uh, will there be the opportunity to use a smart pen with the device? So, I mean, uh, we can use a normal pen. It, it's not a normal touchscreen pen. Uh, it's nothing, um, not a specific pen that would need to have a specific sort of, uh, uh, it's not a specific um, a type of, um, uh, like, a, like, a tab like a tablet pen. It's just a normal touchscreen pen. Uh, there's, Super. Nothing, there's nothing special on the hardware on that side. Okay. And Hugh Dubois asks, what's the highest capacity micro SD card that can be accommodated within the, within the device? Um, so, so far we have tested um, uh, 512 gigabyte, but I expect we can probably go higher um, and uh, maybe to uh, 1 TB uh, or even higher, but we've tested at the moment uh, 512 uh, on the device. Safe to 512 then, yeah. At, um, least, at least 512. That's at least 512. We, we, we'll know more. We don't have that number. We, we don't know that yet. So. For sure. Okay. Um, Matty asks, what, if anything, is the difference between the keyboard on Astro Slide compared to Gemini and Cosmo? So uh, on that side, uh, there are a few differences. So uh, let me see if I can um, just... Uh, show them a little bit. So um, in terms of the keys, I mean, there's essentially um, a, a couple of small differences uh, in terms of the, the, the layout. So if you can see here, this is the Astro. Uh, you have the enter key, which is uh, flush with the shift. It's aligned with the shift and the delete key um, on the side. Whereas on the Cosmo, um, uh, they're slightly offset. Okay, so you can see there um, and you can see also on the Cosmo that the keys are on the corner keys are all square um, as you can see uh, but if I go to the Astro um, then you will see that they are actually rounded 
okay and then the, the last thing is you can see that the um we have increased the size of the up and down arrow uh keys um on the on the astro so you can easier manipulate going up and down left and right Joshua Smith has a question around the smart button. Can it be configured as a play or pause button? So it's a good question. Um, we, 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 we will take that into account. Uh, we're currently working on some of the software modifications. And of course, the smart button will have some choices. We'll try to make that a choice. OK, super. Thank you. Thank you for that request. Uh, Rod um, H asks about, I know you've mentioned Gorilla Glass. So I don't want to touch on that again, but is asking what uh the rest of the case is made of the the non-glass elements of the case you know there there, there are many different materials okay. uh, uh some are to do with the way that the the um the astro has its sliding mechanism so that it, the surface is preserved in a good way uh so there, there are quite a few different materials uh we won't go into that in more detail right now but uh okay. it's uh it's different types of um Plastic materials and um, and the, the glass and the glass on the top surface. Super. Okay. Uh, Roman asks a very unusual question, which is um, about the ancient technology of IRDA. Could um, uh, IRDA be included in? Uh, I think this must be a throwback to the Scion days, I guess. Uh, included in uh, Astro Slide, the Astro geeks, he said, would appreciate it. You can put it on uh, the side near the left escape key or the right delete key. Goal is when two guys sit next to each other, uh, they can make a tight beam connection without radio. I think possibly that might prove tricky, but I'll throw it over to you anyway. So, you know, since then there have been, there've been a few, I mean, obviously things like controlling your TV and other things could be interesting. Also yep. with IRDA and your stereo, et cetera. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we, we have not included that and, and something that, you know, possibly you could buy an RDA, uh, accessory. I'm not sure what, what there is for Android on that particular thing. Uh, but obviously if you wanted to have a local connection, there's some software that actually has kind of silent uh, sound that is transmitted, I think from originally from University College of London that uh, allows you to transmit sound between one system and the other one without really people hearing it. It's in the inaudible spectrum. So you can communicate. I believe there's some software doing that, uh, kind of little chirps that go from one system to another one. Your, your Astro slide will probably be chased around by dogs all afternoon, but apart from that, it would be fine. Um, Christian Theta, uh, Theta asks um, about um, backlit, back, uh, the backlight for the keyboard. Could it be a sort of warm white? Um, we'll investigate the warm white, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, we were going with kind of what, what we see as a kind of our, our kind of, uh, medium white, uh, on the, on the, uh, like, like we had on the Cosmo. I don't think we will not be able to change the color. It will be a single color. And, uh, you know, we were thinking originally also maybe changing the color to something else, but probably to keep everybody happy, it probably is going to be a white but we'll investigate a warm white. Okay, thank you. Mosty C asked a question, and we're almost through the hardware questions now, but thanks to Mosty C. Is the, will the final Astro have a, a, a bump on the F key and the J key? So I think uh, because of the, um, the new uh, way that the, the, the new design of the Astro compared to Cosmo and uh, Gemini, um, we can probably afford to do that now. So uh, when we confirm the keyboard, um plastic uh we will the key plastic will ask for those bumps yeah there you go musty c uh you're part of the uh products development and specification now and myth asks a quick question about um temperature humidity pressure um sensoring or air quality sensoring any plans in those directions uh unfortunately not but it's a nice suggestion i remember some of the last phones from nec that had those sensors inside and it was quite an impressive feature but you know there's so many weather programs now that there's quite a lot of stuff that you can already use but of course not indoor temperature but uh, you know it's uh it's a nice to have but we're 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 not putting it in 
Okay. Thank you very much for those. That's all the hardware questions cover for now. So we'll move on to the software. And a question that's been asked by lots of people is around the uh, regularness, if you like, of firmware updates with Android security patches for Astro. Uh, and how long will you indeed support the device going forward with these security updates? It's obviously a matter of concern. It's been raised by uh, tw uh, the handle 12 here, but uh, by some other people as well. So uh, is there anything you can kind of reassure people in that direction? So we actually talked to the ODM about this and uh, they are assuring us that we will be eligible for four firmware updates a year. Um, and uh, obviously that's something that we um, we plan to um, use. So uh, we, we're thinking about four updates per year. Okay, thanks. And we've got a question from uh, Vincent Lefebvre. Uh, which is, will the Astro have a real escape key for use in text terminals? Now, he seems to feel that the Gemini has this, but Cosmo, um, it's the uh, escape um, key acts like a back button, um, which he describes as annoying uh, and wonders whether it could be configurable. I was just wondering whether there's any plans. Is it going to be more likely to be like Gemini, where escape um, can be used in text terminals, or is it more likely to be like Cosmo? So this is more an Android uh, situation where, you know, the usual Android navigation with keyboards is that escape means back. Uh, and actually, um, we are transmitting probably the escape and the back um, signal, I think, when we press the escape key. So um, we'll, look, we'll look into that as an option, potentially to disable the back key, but t in typical uh, navigation that is the standard thing that uh, one would one would do on Android because the escape key is essentially the back, the way that you do back so delete is not doing back it's actually uh, escape is the Android way to move back, back. backwards in into in, on, on the keyboard right but um, potentially we could add an option to remove that feature in which case the escape key would only mean escape Okay. Josh, uh, next question is from Josh. So thank you, Josh. And it's around software again. Will there be any way to map the keyboard buttons as macros or even inputs on the touchscreen for things like mobile games, etc.? So this, we've been thinking about a utility to do extra mapping. Um, uh, and that's something that uh, we, we'll have to get back to you on that because it's not yet in the, in the plan, but it's something that uh, we, we are thinking about. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question from Astro Nia, uh, and that's a question around Windows ARM. Uh, is uh, Astro able to support Windows ARM? Um, and not at the moment. As far as we are aware, there are no MediaTek Windows ARM um, developments to date, apart from a very rudimentary um, test project a while back uh, that, that never saw the light of day. So um, it's, it's something that uh, is an interesting topic, especially for enterprise customers in the US. Um, and, uh, you know, we might be contacting Microsoft on that side, but uh, to, to see what could be done, but uh, no plans as yet. Okay. And, and on a similar vein, uh, Hauke asks, um, will uh, the phone be optimized for Android Enterprise? And uh, Kunihiko asks, does it work with Chrome OS? So uh, maybe I'll refer to David on this. Yes, um, about Chrome OS, uh, no, it doesn't work with Chrome OS at the moment. Uh, we, we are targeting Android as the operating system for the Astro. And uh, regarding, uh, what was the other and question? Android Enterprise. The other question was around Android Enterprise from Hauke. So about the Android Enterprise, we are not, um, we are not uh, devising that at the moment. So we are not going to uh, work on that uh, at, this, at this point in time. It is something that uh, we, um, we are seeing more and more uh, requests about. So definitely might be a point, something that we can work on uh, in the future 
But okay. at the moment, we have no plans for uh, for this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miko asked another question uh, regarding the non-critical apps that will be pre-installed on the device. Um, first, I think the question is, can will they be able to be removed? Um, and then the second element was, would, for example, Google Apps, would the product be able to ship with a stripped down version of the Google um, Apps? Um, possibly a mini or even micro variant. So I don't know what the situation is. I guess the first question is, is there any app that ships on the device that cannot be removed by the user? I mean, yes, we have a few apps which are needed. Like, for example, in the Cosmo, uh, we have um, the application, our keyboard app, we have app bar, we have a few apps that we provide, which uh, definitely enhance the uh, the user experience uh, we don't uh, we, we never have installed like bloatware and bloatware apps so uh, third party apps that uh, provide um, sometimes not non essential features so all the applications that you will find which are integrated actually uh, are there to um, to enhance the user experience and in regard to google um, well that's the, is sort of the same approach i mean in order to fully uh, experiment android uh, you need the Google library. So if you want to install Google Maps, uh, you, you need them. And that's why, and, and, and if you want a, a certified device, a uh, device that you can use safely, then definitely you have to use the Google library. So that's why they are pre-installed. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, don't forget that our device comes with GMS, with the GMS, you know, approved, right? So basically it's passed the CTS test. It's got the GMS certification. So you can do things like... Uh, uh google pay you can pay with the phone and, and 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 other you know those type of functionalities which you really need and now if you want to remove google uh you know that's another question um and maybe david can you tell us a little bit about what would be the steps to do that uh there are no steps i mean you can't at the moment remove google you can install a different operating system so you can like in cosmo you can install linux uh, but at the moment, so um, we, we don't have a way to remove uh, Google Library. But but there was a question: Is there a version of Android with without the Google Apps that we can install? Well, there's Lineage, uh, which we uh, we had some experimental versions before for the for, uh, for the Gemini. Uh, we will we will need to look into that. But at the moment, there's no uh, there's no simple way to just swap the uh, Google library with something else. Okay, that's clear. Um, Kudahiko has a couple of questions. First one, pretty straightforward. Can the FM radio freak, uh, be set to frequency bands for Japan? Uh, we have to check that. Uh, we're not sure what the frequency ranges are on the radio app. Uh, but uh, there is definitely a radio app on the unit, so we'll okay. we'll, we'll check that. There's an FM radio within within uh, the specification. Uh, one point for us for our Japanese backers. Okay, super. Thank you. Second question uh, from Kunihiko is around uh, use of desktop mode in Android 11. Anything to um, share there? So you know, a couple of years ago, we showed a desktop mode running on. Um, uh, the Cosmo at the Mobile World Congress, the last physical Mobile World Congress in Barcelona before it was it was basically cancelled last year and postponed this year. So um, that was with a company called Oxense from France, um, and uh, they have a system called Oxy. And uh, unfortunately, they sort of. Um, uh, put the system into kind of hibernation. So they stopped the development about a year ago, but I did speak to them recently and uh, it seems that they will be making a version for Android 11. So we'll be uh, watching that space. Um, obviously cannot pro promise anything for launch. Okay, thank you. Uh, then Pavel uh, asks a question very specifically about the agenda app that the current clock in the Agenda app is a 12 hour, not a 24 hour clock. Could it be changed to a 24 hour? I'm not sure whether there's a user setting where that specification can change. Um, in general, uh, what we have used on the apps, and I'll just do a quick check on that 
for um for everybody but i think in general the um the um i'm not i'm not sure i mean the, the clock is 24 hour inside the app so i'm not sure what it's really referring to but in general the apps are picking up the the time settings from android so basically whatever your preference is in android it should really be picking it up onto the on the uh, on, on the apps so in the agenda when you're setting an appointment or something like that you are um you are selecting a 24 hour um you're making a 24 hour selection. So I do think it's uh, it's there as far as I can see, at least uh, on, on my units or maybe my setting sets, it's working as far as I can see. Pavel, we will take that offline. Um, Brendan John uh, has asked a question about, um, would it be possible to have a user assigned multicolor notification LED on the device so that you can quickly see whether you've got a text message or a missed call or whatever it might be? So there is one LED on the device. Uh, that LED would typically show your charging status or some notifications. I, I believe that that's also um, configurable with some third-party apps to be able to show some other things. Um, typically, we used to have the Ledison application on the Gemini that used to do a lot of fun things with uh, LEDs on the front because we didn't have an external display only when you open the shell with the display, but uh, those, those fun uh, five LEDs, uh, unfortunately, are not in these units. So, uh, but yeah, the, the unit will be controllable, yeah. Okay, super. Quick question from Matthew Hurley. Um, can you give us a bit of status on the, um, the backup perk? Um, is there any news on that? So um, it's it's uh, the backup. It's in testing at the moment. We managed to um, uh, back some files up from the Cosmo and restore them on the Astro. Uh, we also managed to um, just uh, back up and restore files between different um, different Cosmos. But yeah, we've managed to do some pretty good uh, restores so far. Still in testing. Obviously, nothing yet final, but. Uh, uh, it's something that we hope to include in the next uh, Android release also for Cosmo. Okay, thanks. And uh, the, coming towards the end of the, the general software questions, before we move on to the, the pithy subject of Linux, Myth asked the question, uh, Can you are you able to provide a rooted image from the beginning so we do not have to unlock the bootloader? Um, well, the short answer is no, and there's a reason for that. The reason is that a rooted image, if you, if you just have a rooted image, then uh, some functionalities such as like payment uh, will not be working straight away. So because it's not basically a certified device. And also some apps like, uh, I guess, Netflix and other uh, applications, they just check if the device is rooted or not and allow some functionalities or not. So they can limiting. So it's a feature that we are happy to provide to users, but only to the users that really want it. So by default, it comes as a certified unit. If you want to, um, uh, to use a rooted image, that's fine. You do it at your own risk and, uh, and, and we are happy for you to do that. So it will come as, um, uh, again, like as a kind of a firmware change. So you can have both uh, in your device. Okay. That's very clear. Thank you. Um, so the next section is, is all questions around Linux. And there's been, obviously, as you wouldn't be surprised to know, quite a few here as well. Uh, kicking off again with Hu Dubois, um, given the interest in Linux um, and the fact that it's a big um, USP for, uh, for Planet Computer devices, is there any update can you give us on where we are with Linux, particularly perhaps Linux on Android, which was mentioned um, in the previous Q&A, and will this be a full stack Linux as an application by Planet Computers? So, uh, no, I don't have, uh, unfortunately, many details on, uh, on, on the Linux side because we're still heavily focusing on the Android. So uh, we, need to, we need to focus on that first. But basically, uh, Linux on the Android, the plan uh, is basically to... Um, to investigate one of the few apps which are available um, for Android, which allows you to experience Linux on top of it. So they are, um, they are basically application, they are different kinds of application and uh, a few of them they use, um, they basically expose Linux as either a shell 
or uh, as a kind of X server. So you, you, uh, they use like, for example, VNC to redirect the graphics part. So from the user point of view, you, it, it looks like running Linux, uh, but it's just an application on top of Android. Um, and that's something that it might be quite interesting for people who want a sort of um, uh, light functionalities of Linux on top of Android. So you don't have to uh, reformat the unit. You don't have to create a partition. Everything is sort of um, virtualized on top. Uh, but still, you can access some uh, Linux application sort of on the go if needed. Uh, that's, that's the idea. We still have to, um, uh, to, to investigate further into it. Super. Okay, thanks. And Hugo and Yogi both ask on Selfish OS support. Um, any any updates there? I appreciate that you've already said that probably um, Android is the priority at this moment in time. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit early to say. Uh, it's a bit early to say. And also, uh, this will be, the, the Astro will use Android 11. And usually I know that using like a very, uh, like new, version of the OS can be complicated when you have to integrate with either um, Debian or other version mm. or, or Sailfish. Okay. So uh, we will see in the future really what we can do. Okay. So um, Arvind and uh, Canada both asked questions similarly on uh, Ubuntu Touch. Um, is that Would that be a similar answer, I guess? Uh, yes. I mean, we talk about Ubuntu Touch for the Cosmo, actually, uh, where we are keeping uh, working on the on the on the actual implementation uh, for the Astro. No, it's still it's still too early to, to say. Okay, um, I, I think this is a bit perhaps a bit of a theoretical question, but Patrick has asked it anyway. Which is, have you got any indication you can give in terms of the expected boot uh, booting time when booting either from Android to Linux or Linux to Android? Uh, it's basically, um, I, I, don't, I don't have a number, but it's actually, uh, so if you know how long it takes to boot into, into, the, into Android, it's exactly the same, but booting into Linux. So usually it's around the same time and switching from one to the other, it's just uh, basically, um, it's the same as switching off the unit and switching on again. Okay, so it cool. Takes the time. There's no, uh, there is no time lost in switching between one or the other because they live in two different uh, spaces, two different partitions. It's just a matter of switching on the device. Super, thank you. Um, I appreciate everyone's got lots and lots of questions around very specific um, Linux um, questions, but I hope you'll appreciate that at this stage, it's a little bit too early to be able to get quite specific. But thank you anyway, AW, Dom Rodriguez, Usagi, A Marchant, uh, Digby, a whole pile of other people who've asked questions around that. One question I would just quickly come to from Digby was um, that, uh, the question that I'm really keen to fund support for the development and maintenance of a multi-boot options that use Debian, Ubuntu, Stroke Linux. I mean, obviously, it's a community effort. So I guess the question is, is there a, a kind of um, a service somewhere which is, um, you know, a Patreon or something like that where people can support the development of, of Linux and specific um, parts of Linux uh, if, uh, if they should wish to? Yes, we, we don't have that at the moment. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting idea. We can, we can explore and see what can be done. Uh, for the moment, we really, um, we really dedicate some time uh, to sort of organize the community development. So it's really the open source community which donated their time and, and their work for uh, basically the different Linux flavors. Uh, and, and that's what happened. But definitely, it will be, I mean, if there will be a fund, it will go to basically to that open source community, not to us. Understood. Uh, it's something mention, that you uh, can investigate. Yeah, yeah. And just to mention, as, as soon as we have some devices, you know, last time we said that people are interested to help on the Linux side, we'll be marking a limited number of devices that we can send out to people to, to kind of speed up the Linux work uh, once we have them. So uh, there's a few people that have been in touch already, sent an email to hello at planetcom.co.uk to, uh, to, to say, look, I'm interested in helping on the Linux side. So um, it's certainly something that, uh, you know, we're taking seriously. So. Super. Thank you very much. Um, I 
that that on the software side i'm going to draw a line under that now so that this video doesn't get too long um, and i think that answers most of the questions but obviously we will be doing another q a in about a month or so's time so if there's any updates at that point i'm sure davide and, and yanka will both be happy to share them um the next set of questions are really around um cosmo um and particularly around um uh, firmware updates, particularly around security. Thanks to JF Blaze, Michael Kravitz and Stuart uh, for these questions. Um, when's the next update? Uh, so the next update will be uh, next week. Uh, we're just finishing the um, firmware of the air uh, update server and uh, there'll be a Cosmo Android 9 um, uh, version, new version V25 with January uh, 2021 security patches in there. So um, keep a lookout when you get a wireless update notice or check in your wireless update um, to update to the latest uh, V25. A couple of practical questions here. Um, Alex and Kay Sandom uh, both ask, how do I or when can I change my shipping address? Or can you advise everybody, people who might have moved since, moved house since the, uh, they provided the first shipping address, how should they deal with that? Um, you know, at the moment, people are just sending in uh, messages uh, over the uh, Indiegogo messaging. That's probably the most secure way because otherwise we don't know really who's contacting us. So the best way to do that is through Indiegogo. Uh, messages directly to the campaign owner. Okay, there you go. You've got, got a clear answer there. A uh, question that's been asked by quite a few people, and again, it's quite a practical one from Magician, Westnet, Christoph, Miko, and also Jeffrey. Thanks, guys, for your questions. It's all about shipping. Um, two things, really. First of all, can you confirm the shipping date? And uh, secondly, why does Indiegogo still say the products are shipping in March? Uh, so up to very recently, the Indiegogo perks uh, could not change the estimated shipping date. So that's why originally we are thinking that the dates couldn't be changed because we couldn't change them for the Cosmo campaign or the Gemini campaign. Uh, however, it looks now that in the latest uh, update of the Indiegogo website, you can change the date. So we will be changing them. Uh, we haven't changed them yet, uh, primarily because uh, we, we just haven't. But uh, we will uh, uh, do that shortly. Um, uh, as I said, we just want to double check everything. But as I said, the estimate is that the first devices should be shipping uh, in June, end of June or so. OK, so that's very clear then. Um, a few couple of questions now on accessories, then a couple on repairs. Um, and then I think we've covered pretty much everything off. So on the accessories side, there's a question around can we get our accessories in June as well? Um, or will there be a little bit of a delay until they're available? Uh, so we'll announce the accessories sort of around the beginning of uh, April or so. Uh, hopefully that should be enough time that the accessories can ship uh, with, the, um, with the devices themselves. So you receive them at the same time. Um, however, you know, with the shipping, with the shipping these days, uh, sometimes the accessories are shipped separately. So again, it really depends on uh, the timing on all of this, whether they can be shipped together with the device. So we have to see. Watch this space, and we'll keep you posted on that. Dom Rodriguez has asked: Will the existing Planet Car Mount kit work with the Astro? Um, and if not, um, will there be a new one? Um, it should do. We haven't tested it yet. Uh, but uh, just in case it doesn't, we will we will be do, doing the checking. But we, given that it's kind of spring loaded, the mechanism we don't we don't want to check with our very few samples that we have right now. Just in case, because the Astro doesn't kind of fly off somewhere and uh, go. <laughs> so, okay. So we'll do a bit of that uh, later on when we have some of the units for destruction testing as well. Yeah, Astro slide is a uh, precious commodity at this moment in Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and then in terms of repairs, Warren asked, will you have, a, you know, will you make available a kind of spare parts kit? Say someone's lost one of their keys, they want to replace it or uh, something along those lines. Will that be possible? So 
So, so uh, I think, you know, with, with, with this, uh, there's been many uh, requests for the spare parts kind of side. Uh, um, the truth is that we, for Cosmo and Gemini, we don't have that many spare parts around, so it would be difficult to put them in a the store. Um, but in terms of for, for Astro, uh, um, one of the considerations is that we kind of allow backers to back uh, some uh, additional parts as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I know we've touched on pretty much this story already, but um, we'll go through it again. Uh, Herbst, Freund uh, and Dom Rodriguez have both asked questions around this as well, which is around uh, the desire of some of our backers to fix their own devices. Um, I imagine that that begins to bring into question some um, warranty issues. So, um you know, obviously, it's not something that you, from the conversation that we had earlier in in this very Q and A, it's obviously not something that you can encourage or or ask people to do or um, or suggest people do in any in any way. Is it something that you're looking at in the future at all? Uh, look, the device, it's you know, it's a complex device, so I wouldn't advise people to try to fix it themselves. But you know, I know that we have some very technical uh, users, and um, you know, it's it's really done at their own risk. Uh, so, you know, in terms of spare parts, I mean, we are obviously operating servicing for many devices. Uh, if people drop them, we'll spill liquids on them and, and, and these things happen. Um, so, uh, I, I, it, it's, it's, it's still, you know, quite a complex device. So I, I wouldn't advise it, um, you know, um, unless, unless you really sort of uh, prevent it from sending us the unit in for, for repair. Okay, thank you. And, and then one final question, actually, covering off, I think, um, quite a wide range of questions this afternoon. That's around the future, whether you uh, immediately plan to look at creating another device after Astro Slide, uh, or whether there's any uh, kind of future roadmap in uh, planning in mind at this stage. Would that be via Indiegogo? Is any of that decided at the stage or is it all uh, up in the air? Not yet. I mean, obviously, you know, we have uh, some thoughts on the roadmap and we've, we've had many thoughts on devices, but there's no sort of, uh, at the moment, there's no sort of uh, uh, immediate sort of successor to Astro or Cosmo. We're very focused on the Astro right now and supporting the Cosmo and Gemini devices. So, you know, we're not, or we're not uh, sort of uh, yet thinking about another device we're very focused on getting Astro out, uh, um, out the door at the moment. Yeah, let's get Astro sorted first. Absolutely. Great stuff. Okay, well, thank you very much. I I, I must thank uh, both Davide and Yanko for your time and your openness and your honesty this afternoon. Uh, these Q&As have been very well received by the um, community um, and I would suggest we continue to run them on a broadly on a monthly basis so that people can ask questions but most of all i'd like to thank the community for their fantastic and wide-ranging number of questions i hope you feel that your questions have been answered i hope you also feel that even if we haven't been able to answer them in full that we've given you some indication as to either why we can't answer them in full at this stage or when we might be able to answer them in full um, and it's certainly our intention to continue uh, to run these uh, Q&As for as long as we're getting questions being asked by the community. So again, thank you to Davide and thank you to Yanko uh, and thank you to the community for your support and uh, your continued questions and we look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs>